when we talk about jitter in DAX, for example. We know it's bad, but quite a lot of people sometimes I even mistake manufacturers for not quite knowing what it's all about, what jitter is. You don't say. <laughs> um, I mean, I am, I am a, I'm a sales guy. I'm very interested in the technology. Uh, um, when Bent first really introduced me to how that works, and, and we did stuff to see how it affects music, that's quite interesting. It's quite something. But at the same time, it's very it's very difficult to talk about. Um, when when Dax, this is a little bit of a gold rush area for all the manufacturers in the world are bringing out Dax in you know, bus loads of Dax. Uh, you try to go with the flow and try to do what's, what's popular. And right now, for example, for USB backs, asynchronous, it's very, very popular. Uh, and you, do, you try to do things the easiest way. Uh, this gentleman be, behind us there is, is doing it another way though. And he's bored. sometimes <laughs> making my life very, very difficult. Because I'm trying to sell and market what he makes. And he, when I said, oh, I thought about we should have maybe asynchronous, he said, no, it doesn't work. It works, of course, if the DAC costs 3,000 euros or 30,000 kronos. Yes, it works. But many of these very popular things that you read about, they do help the problem. They say they help. Quite most of the time they do. But they sometimes take so big chunks of the budget that you have to make these stacks that the things you really should have done in the first place can't be done because you can't afford it. So the last product we will introduce to you today is really a no-nonsense product where we have taken away all of these funny stuff. It's a USB DAC. It costs about the same as <laughs> quite a, a busload or two of other USB DACs. It's going to cost 2,000 Norwegian, a little over 2,000 Danish and Swedish and, well, not 2,000 euros, fortunately. <laughs> But uh, less than 300 euros in, in, in Finland and the rest of the world. It is not asynchronous. Uh, it is 24-bit uh, 96 kilohertz over USB. Uh, it's very easy. It doesn't require any extra software. It installs itself automatically. It's very, very new chips. Uh, and by being a small company still, we hope we'll be big one time. Uh, we can move very fast. So these chips, some of these chips we use in here, we were beta testing for the manufacturer and developer this summer. So they are very, very new. Uh, most of our competitor haven't even started using the last edition of, of these chips. So they are quite new. And that is important because it moves fast in the digital world. And which which uh, produce? Uh, Tenor. Uh, and the other thing, so that, that's one thing, I mean, that's not unique. It's unique in a way that we're early, but it's, we're, it's not unique in a way that we are the only one that is ever going to use this. I hope not, because it would mean that we're really, really bad. But what we have spent a whole lot of money on is jitter reduction. And when we looked at this distortion in amplifiers, and we listened to several amplifiers, that reduces this, and we have listened to the effects of that. Well, when you measure jitter, you send a complicated music signal into the DAC. And it often consists of one main tone. Oops, these are supposed to be at the same equal height. It looks a bit like this. And all these are audible sounds with 500 hertz increments. So this is maybe 11,000 hertz. Uh, yeah. Well, for the sample frequency. Yeah. So this would be 11.5, 12, so on and downwards. Then you measure what comes out the other end. And remember that all these are audible sounds, just like the distortion elements. And what comes out? 
sometimes some of these are taller sometimes they are smaller this is smaller this is taller and then maybe you have built a skirt of sound around this and then maybe you have just made a couple of new ones that wasn't supposed to be there at all this is jitter this is what happens when you get a timing problem between the sender of the signal and the receiver which in the end case is the DAC chip itself and in this even in this very entry level DAC what we have done is when all these I won't take it from the very start because you're educated people when all these ones and zeros uh, gets into the DAC we store it in a buffer this is a very very simplified version if you want a very very complicated one he can do it later <laughs> over a beer uh, we what gather it all in a buffer and we have made a very very good clock that we developed ourselves that is directly connected to the buffer <coughs> directly connected to the DAC and it controls how this buffer should resend the signal in exactly the same uh, pace and rhythm that we want the DAC to operate. So by this <coughs> we effectively reduce the, the volume of the timing problem. So when you do this measurement on a Hegel it is much much more the same as the original. And then you have less extra sounds that is added to the music. Or how much jitter do you measure them? How much jitter do we measure in HD2? Well, That's quite little. Actually, uh, it's very hard to measure jitter as a number because it yeah. uh, consists of a lot of different frequencies. Yeah. As you see in this drawing, uh, the main signal, the 11 kilohertz, the, the, the high in the, in the middle, uh, in the red color you can see the skirts going down at each side, and this is low frequency jitter. And the low frequency jitter is in a lot of DACs the biggest problem, really. And, and, and you, you couldn't really represent this as a single number. Because the, yeah. some say that it's yeah. 10 picoseconds yeah. or 7 yeah. picoseconds, that's difficult. But you can see yes. it on a measurement chart. Yeah. So if you want, well, I think we can make some jitter measurements of the HD2 available. So you can download it, I can email it to you. Oh. So you can see how it actually looks compared to uh, uh, the original. Um, I asked uh, one manufacturer about this uh, this weekend yeah. and uh, he said that uh, measuring jitter was very difficult because you would get a different number each time you measure. Is that correct? Like he, he, said it, he said they had to measure their DACs like oh, uh, say 10 times then you get a mm -hmm and yeah, then you get an average of those that, 10 measurements. But that, that's what you do always. You, you use the system in uh, average mode and you take a lot of measurements mm. and then it will be uh, uh, average uh, measurement. That's the okay. way you always do it. So it's, uh, so it's correct that it, uh, uh, that, it, that it, it varies more than when you measure, for instance, uh, noise? Well, noise is also uh, oh, well, random. So yeah. But, but, but a steady state distortion would be more uh, steady. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Good. But, but uh, it's, uh, it's really, really easy to see the differences between uh, different uh, backs and to see uh, how the engineers were thinking about uh, reducing jitter or not. Mm. You see the different uh, plots of these measurements. Mm. Yeah. I can email a uh, measurement of, uh, of the HD. Two mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and the original signal, so you can compare it to all of you tomorrow. Please do. Yep, because it's 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 quite nice to look at. Because everything you see on those charts are audible signals. And this last little gadget is of course in a USB deck. It's powered by USB, and to afford a very very precise jitter reduction, what we have done is that we have reduced the analog output level. So this is line level. 1.2 volts compared to 2.3 because to get 2.3 volts when connected via the USB you have 
you need to have a discrete uh, analog stage. And it doesn't really help sound, it doesn't affect sound in a positive way. So by reducing this to 1.2 volts, we could keep uh, the sound quality of the analog stage intact, but get a large budget so we can be able to do this. And when it's connected with a USB, that has a lot to say. 